Hey, Terry Caliendo from Dedicated Managers here again, and I got a new project here that I'm able to talk about. It's always fun when I've got something that I can uh, uh, publicly talk about. And uh, so I've rebuilt a website from uh, an old um, framework, and I, I, I ported it over to WordPress, and I just want to talk about um, some of the things I did to make it possible. It's a, uh, it's a very simple website, um, you know, only a few pages, but it's got a lot of custom functionality that I'll, I'll briefly talk about in a second. Um, so the, the visual side of it, um, I finally found, I have to say, I've, I've always hated WordPress, really loathed working with WordPress because I just don't understand the, um, the templating system and the way it works. Uh, but finally, and I never took the time to figure it out, but finally I found a tool called Oxygen. Um, and, and this is a front end builder, um, drag and drop, um, you know, easy to work with. You just type, you know, whatever you want to type. If you want to change the color, um, you know, you could do whatever you need to do. Um, very visually and very easy to, to lay out and change the way things uh, look and feel. You know, if you need space or whatever you're doing, um, obviously I'm making things look worse, but uh, you know I can make them look better. And also there's even responsive functionality. Very important in today's today's designs is to be able to design at uh, a responsive level, so we can change um, how the interface looks or how the the front end looks based on on various screen sizes. So here I'm programming based on the screen size so I can make that text smaller on smaller screens and then when it comes back to the big screen you can see that it went back to the original size and those spaces came back so uh, very very cool functionality in that you can work with uh, all the different screen sizes and uh, get different um, you know tweak it for each screen size very easily um, so I'll go over in, in some, some subsequent videos, I'll talk about how I built the website in, um, in Oxygen, the front end side. And then um, I also did a lot of advanced functionality in the website. So even though the you know, website is very simple, the tour schedule and the newsletter are custom coded because there's advanced functionality that, that we needed that uh, I wasn't able to get in off the shelf plugins. Um, with the schedule, the, the main thing is I wanted to have a really nice look, clean look that uh, I had control over, which I could have done with, um, you know, there's some, some plugins that are good, but there's, I'm constantly being asked to put, you know, certain things in certain places and extra data and, and notes and, and, and specifically these, these ticket links, they're all green right now, but when a show starts to tell out, sell out, um, we manually change the color uh, as the tickets get to about 60% sold. We, t we change the color of this to yellow, and then uh, when it sells out, we change it to red, and it changes to sold out here. So, uh, and plus there's, there's um, uh, which one? I know this one has it. Um, you know, I, there's times where I, I'm told I, I need to put notes in certain places, so I want to have complete control over the layout. Um, and so I'll talk about how I did that and how I used um, custom plugins and uh, your custom plugin and, and some uh, easier plugin functionality to get what I needed. And also the, um, you know, each of these tour dates, I could have just, you know, built this tour page and made it look nice with a... Um, you know, by manually typing in each of these tour dates. But this is actually, this functionality is actually code that um, is going to pull from the database. So, I'm, you know, I'm on the same website here. I'm just quickly showing the different pages. I've got them all laid out rather than taking the time to load everything. Um, but this is, this is my tour schedule page or the tour schedule page. And uh, you can just see that there's some code. It, there's, some of it's written directly in, um, in um, Oxygen, this is again the Oxygen interface, the builder. I, I, you can put and make a code block and throw you know specific code in for what you want. Since I need to loop over all the dates, the tour dates, um, I, I have special code to do that. I'll talk about that in some other videos. And um, each one of these tour dates is a custom post type. So if we look at uh, the dashboard here, uh, where you see the post media pages. You can see I've also created some custom post types, and ultimately I want to shrink these down into their own menu. But for right now, they're each is you know each is its own. Um, but I have tour dates here, tour venues. So um, you know the the venue is the the let me get back to 
this would this is pulled from the venue and this is pulled from the tour um, tour dates so they are um, you know uh, each has its own information so if this is a tour date that we're looking at here the tour date custom post type um, and you can see I've added a bunch of information um, that's stored about each show so this is the January 11th show at 8 p.m. the tickets the color of the button um, the show ticket link if there is a specific one which venue it's tied to and um, this is the custom note where I did that red thing um, so I have full control and again I'll, 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 I'll deep dive into a lot of this but I just wanted to show that um, you know there's a lot of advanced functionality there and to get this um, not only am I writing um, custom code, so here's my developer to write my custom plugin, my DMI custom functions. This is a plugin that I've, I've just basically developed. Really, all you need to develop a plugin is to this right here. You throw that in a, in a folder, and, and now you can start writing you know, custom code. And I'll talk about all this stuff, what's going on there um, as it relates to you know, building the, um, the features that I needed. And beyond the, um, you know, that custom code, this custom code that I, I wrote, I, I used a couple helpers. Um, I was a little lazy in um, creating the post types, so I'll talk about how I used uh, a custom post type plugin to create these plug these types up here, um, which contain all my, in my, my dynamic information. Uh, and custom fields, which is just a fantastic plugin to easily add all these fields so I didn't have to write the code for the form for for all this stuff um, these custom fields within this um, this tour date um, custom post type um, you know these fields are all brought in by um, the custom fields plugin and even this one which is fantastic um, this allows me to relate two different custom post types to each other so this is allowing me to relate my uh, I'm in the tour dates and I'm relating uh, each tour show to a particular venue. Um, and so I'm relating this thing to this thing um, through through this. And it's just a matter of a single field in here adding it. You know, I didn't have to write all the functionality to go and look up all the different um, venues uh, to put them in here. It's it's all, you know, done for me with that plugin. So I'll talk about that too. Um, and then finally, as far as the advanced functionality goes, um, the newsletter right here, subscribe, modify, unsubscribe, it is custom functionality as well. I could have gone and gotten a plugin like MailChimp or, um, you know, there's, there's uh, MailPoet, there, you know, there's, there's direct integrated uh, newsletter email systems. But I had some advanced functionality in that we take zip codes and we only want to send emails to people in a specific zip code radius. So, um, you know, if, he, if, if Frank is playing in Milwaukee, Wisconsin, we type in the, the, rate, the zip code of the, the show, and then the system will calculate based on everybody else's zip codes um, that they enter, whether or not they're in a, um, the proximity of the show. And so um, we also let them say how far they're willing to travel. So if their zip code is within 75 miles or whatever they entered of the zip code of the show, they'll get an email reminder about the show. So with 100,000 uh, uh, subscribers currently on the list, if Frank's performing in Milwaukee, the people in Orlando, Florida don't want to know about it. Um, so we, you know, we just we send by zip code. And, um, you know, you can do that on certain newsletters, uh, things, but you have to do segments and then you have to type in each individual zip code for, you know, that's in within proximity. And so, um, partly as an exercise in, in getting to show the, the custom functionality capabilities that does dedicated managers has with, um, with oxygen, with, uh, I'm sorry, with WordPress and, and how good we are at coding and stuff. Um, this makes it much easier what we're doing here. So it's we, we developed a custom uh, plugin, uh, you know, custom functionality to do that mathematics, and, and I'll show all of it in code and how it's all done in subsequent videos. Oh, and one other thing I wanted to show uh, along with the newsletter, if we go back to the dashboard here, um, the fan email templates. So when I go to send an email, I've got this this concept of these templates. 
which I'll open this in a new window and we can take a look at it. So here is a template and that template has the layout of the email that's going to be sent from the fan mail um, and it's got you know the, the, the main structure along with uh, some variables that get populated with stuff about the show. So if I were to go to create a new fan email and again this is all custom functionality that I'll talk about how it was built. If I was to create a new fan email I would pick a venue so say Copper Blues Phoenix this might be a little out of order but uh, that should probably be on the top but then I go to this custom plugin that we built for um, Tiny MCE, which was very simple, and I can now go and retrieve that um, that template, but it fills it in with the dates, the information about the venue that was chosen down here. So this, um, you know, these variable, this variable venue name is getting filled in with the name of the 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 venue and same with all the show info so it makes it really easy to send a fan email so you know the the info is all filled out this is more info about the user that'll get filled in as the email gets sent um, and then so we can you know type in the zip code of where it's being sent who we're sending it to um, and then go ahead and and prepare it and send it and I'll talk about that stuff in later videos but just more functionality that uh, that is cap that we created to make things easy as far as um, you know keeping those fans engaged. So that's a brief overview. Um, hopefully um, this is interesting to you. If it is, uh, I, you know I'm, I'm planning on. I don't know how fast I'm going to pump out these videos. I'll probably get a couple done soon and then do some more over time. Try and come up with a release schedule. Maybe uh, you know that's good marketing for uh, subscribers. Part of what we we tell our clients to do is to um, you know create um, you know content weekly, um, but uh, you know sometimes the, you know life life gets in the way and, and projects get in the way. I've got a very big project coming up, so it might slow things down a little bit. But uh, you know if, if you uh, please subscribe to you know the Dedicated Managers YouTube page. There should be a subscribe button somewhere around this video that you're watching. Um, and, uh, and, and, and I'll show you everything that we're doing and how to do some of this advanced custom functionality. And uh, hopefully it'll be a good learning process for someone out there. Take care. Have a great day. Happy coding. Uh, and if you need any help with any programming, feel free to contact us at dedicatedmanagers.com. This is us right here. Um, feel free to uh, you know contact us anytime you need help. Take care. Have a great day and happy coding.